Hey there, it's Barb Pask going to paint for you tonight again. Little disclaimer, got a little cold going on, a little puny, and <laughs> so if my voice sounds a little funny, excuse that, or hopefully you won't hear me sniffing. Um, going to paint a still life for you tonight. I bought some fresh daisies at the store, and I'm going to focus on whites, uh, white daisies, which are a cooler white. Never, I don't think things look correct through the camera. The picture is a warmer white, and then of course it's on a white cloth. So you know that would be the challenge. Will be the to do a variety of whites. Um, try to get the values right. I pre-mixed a few whites. One of the things I did do, which is a good t uh, tip, if you use white palette paper, this works great. I don't. I'm working out of my uh, box for my plein air easel, but I did put a little piece of white paper in the box by my paints um, because even though there aren't a lot of highlights on this little picture, there's one up on the lip, wherever you do have highlights when you're painting white, you've got to remember that this is as light as you can go. So any paint that you mix needs to be darker than that for your highlight to stand out. So again, white palette paper works good for that. Um, I'm going to turn this picture just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, bring it back again. And tonight I'm going to uh, going to tone with a darker color. We're trying something different here. This is an eight by ten panel. These are water mixable oils. So I'm dipping into a little water so this moves around. Water mixable oils are oils. They do make mediums for them. Um, I've tried a few of them, wasn't wild about them, so I either work right out of the tube or with a little bit of water to thin. I use good. I use good ones though. I use Cobra. I use Duo. I think that's a lot of it. I've had people tell me they didn't care for them, felt they were sticky. I've heard that a few times, and that may come from the medium, maybe, or maybe the paints aren't real good. I don't know. That hasn't been my experience with them. I found them. I went straight from traditional oils to these, and just didn't notice a big difference. And this tone was uh, ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide. I work with a limited palette. I work with two blues, two yellows, two reds, a white, and I do like Indian yellow and transparent red oxide. Those are kind of my extra colors. So I think what we're going to do, instead of like sketching it all this time, we'll see how well this works. I'm going to use my view catcher to set up my composition. Again, this is an 8 by 10 and we're going to try with a brush and a rag to maybe wipe out. One reason I'm thinking I'll do that is um, because I'm working with whites and it would be nice to probably wipe back to the panel so get a really clean surface to work from. So let's just try this and see how it goes. I'll show you. Um, before we get started here. I painted them last night. Same, same similar thing. And uh, I don't know if I was real pleased with it. That was what I did last night. I mean, it's okay. I'm, I consider myself an impressionist and I blocked in the daisies kind of all in one and then put some texture in there for the where the light was hitting, so it's okay. Um, I did that different. I put a orange tone on the canvas, sketched it on. I went at it a more traditional way, which is fine. I, you know, it's fun to try different things. So tonight I thought we'd go at it a little bit different and we would try wiping out before we start. But I like that composition. I, I kept the picture more off to one side with the flower laying there. So we'll try to do something similar. And again, I'm, I'm an impressionist, so 
I tend to look at flowers as a mass instead of, and, and you know, my feeling is if you define a few, the brain knows what it's looking at. And it's more interesting, I think, instead of painting every little petal. So what I'm doing is just kind of wiping out where I see daisies. And again, you know, doesn't have to be real precise because we'll be going back in here again. But I thought this might be a fun way to work. Nice to have some flowers in the house with it. Oh, about sick of winter. But we did have sunshine today. It's depressing sometimes with no sunshine. I have daylight bulbs in my studio and I sometimes think that's good for me. I get in here and so I am kind of, you know, I am using the brush to draw with and wipe it out. We could use a paper towel. We may do some of that. There are people that start their paintings all in values. You know, they block in all their values and then they come in with color. And I'll, of course, have to paint over the background again anyway. I mean, look how thin it is wouldn't have to. There's no rules, right? If I liked it that way, I could leave it that way. Let's try, let's try a little paper towel action here. You know, and if I don't get everything exactly right, it doesn't matter because at least I'll be painting over the background again anyway, but I guess that this might be a fun way to start. I know I got a daisy laying here in the foreground. Actually, it's light down to about there. Some people paint with their fingers. I've seen artists that do that. Actually, I have tried that. You know, I try everything. You actually have more control than you would think with your fingers. It's surprising. Get some really clean whites here where I see the light hitting. arrangement moved around since last night. So my goals are a few things. Um, I try to think about what I'd like to accomplish. I'd, of course, like it to be painterly. And, uh, 
I want to stay back on my brush, which is something I've been trying to tell myself to do lately. Try I'd like to also not play with it a lot. You know, not go back and over and over and over and over and rework areas. I mean, if I get, sometimes you have to do that because you don't get enough paint on there to start, but uh, so let's just start off. I think I'll mix up some green and I have uh, Indian yellow and ultramarine blue, which is a transparent green. And we don't even, we don't have any leaves or anything, unfortunately. That would be kind of nice and we could pretend we do. Throw some foliage in, I mean. The daisies is just a lot of skinny stems, you know. And then we're gonna mass in the daisies and um, For now, we're just going to keep them all kind of dark. And again, I'm pretty much looking at them. I'm just trying to look at the mass of them and not individual daisies at this point. I've done them both ways. I've set up still lifes and spent a lot of time trying to make them realistic and uh, You gotta figure out what you like, what appeals to you in a painting, and to determine how you think you want to paint. Now this is the lighter mixture I mixed up, but it's not the lightest. I'll probably do like I did last night, come in with a palette knife. Again, I'm trying to stay back on the brush. can kind of see down in this picture a little bit and it's fairly dark down in there so yeah it may may or may not stay that way and I can see I've got this picture a little wide all right so we're going to um, leave those for now and we'll uh, start on the darkest part of the picture. I'll tell you what I do see that I like is a um, shadow from the flowers. So we'll put some of that up into here. Got a little bit of a shadow down here from the Daisy laying in front. Thank you. If you're a new subscriber, I really appreciate that and welcome to my channel.
numbers are slowly heading up, which is wonderful. I've said it before, don't know what my ultimate goal is here, just to have fun and hopefully be helpful to some people. in between the dark and the light area and then it gets much lighter over here and warmer but hopefully I've kept it dark enough that my highlight will stand out that was my intention area down here is lighter. It's catching uh, reflection from the tablecloth. Soften up that shadow. So I can see already I'm going to have to correct the shape of this. This has gotten a little fat. But that's okay. We'll do that with our background cup, you know, when we come in with our background color but he's, he's a little fatter than, I have him a little fatter than he is. See that little rim back in there. See I'm choking up on that brush. I tend to do that when I go in for detail. And sometimes you have to. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. All right, let's get this daisy down on the table. We're going to take some green and um, put the centers in where we see them. Where's that guy? That. We see the bottom of that one, and some green on the bottom of that one. And again, even though there aren't leaves hanging here, we may suggest some, just to make it, you know, soften it up, and we'll see. Kind of an organic shape. Yeah, I think what we'll do before we um, come in, you know, with brighter highlights on the flowers, I think we'll get everything blocked in. And the tablecloth, it's a, it's a cooler white compared to the pitcher.
palette knife's a good way to get paint on the canvas, even if you go back and rework it, it's still a helpful tool, I think. you ever get in a competition where time is of the essence, palette knife can really help you out. Get some paint on there. It's fun to compete. I do plein air competitions and I don't have any expectations, of course, but um, I, I enjoy it. I like plein air, of course, if the weather is good and it's really enjoyable. But I usually do a, a few a year anyway. Okay, we're gonna go back to our bigger brush that we used to do the wash on. Brushes I use are Rosemary and Company from the UK. I don't know if I said that, I've said that over and over. It's the ones I'm using right now and these are the evergreens so they're softer which is good and bad. We're going to get some of this background blocked in. And the nice thing about the tone that's on there, we've got some color on there already, so. Again, this will help us define the shape of the picture, though. Still working with a dirty brush because I don't care if my colors intermix. So figure out a way to kind of blend these together because I don't personally I don't like a real hard edge between my my background and my foreground so one of the wonderful things about oils is you can just blend and blend I say the good thing is that they blend the bad thing is that they blend you know you can blend them and lose every bit of detail you got so that's the drawback to it. And acrylics, I know they have their advantages. If you're an acrylic painter, I use them for some things. They're just a different way to work, you know, layers and layers, and for me anyway. And I know you can block in the background and then come in and paint over top of it. And I like working the whole painting at once, though. I don't like piecing it together. I think you kind of need to work it together to really know what's going on.
trying something here. I'm not in love with the way that looks. switch to our palette knife and we're going to go look at the daisies. Again, they're a cooler white, so even though it would be more white than anything now because we want them to feel like the light's hitting them. Just looking to see where the ones that are catching the light are. There's a lot of them, yeah. So my feeling on flowers are, um, these are all daisies, but if I explain a couple of them, then you know you're looking at daisies. I don't need to explain them all. Christmas is over, but I've had some pet commissions lately, which is nice. I finished up two dog portraits and uh, got the approval on those, and I'm closing in on a couple cat portraits now. I love painting the animals. Check out my website if you want. Um, I'll put it in the description box below and see a little more of my work that way. And uh, oops, got a little too much paint there. See, kind of catching all over the bouquet, but uh, let's put a center in that one, even though we don't see it. Put our suggestion of our leaves back in. That's the thing with daisies, you see, you see a lot of little skinny stems. Sure, but let's look at this guy down here too and see where he's catching light. I'm 
All right, let's look at this picture now. I feel like I need to work on the shape of him a little bit, so let's do that. I'm gonna clean up my brush for the first time, really. Going back into the mixtures that I made for the picture, and let's look at the shape of him here. Again, he was fairly thinly painted. Cutting into him there a little bit. Finding the shape. Of course, we don't have any shadow under him yet either. something there okay it's a little early maybe but I'm gonna get out my um, liner brush because I want to put in this lip that I see let's see I get enough paint on there all splayed out but that's okay we're not trying for let's see if the highlight works see it does stand out pretty well so we kept everything dark enough our values are dark enough where the highlight shows it's really amazing how dark you can go with white and it still read like white pretty dark. Look around at some paintings, you know, if you Google paintings of um, white objects and see how dark people have went, sometimes it's very surprising. All right, I'm looking at my shadow and my shape. Let's try, um, even though I don't see a highlight, let's try a highlight there on him. It might be fun if it was coming across and hitting there. Again, I don't really see it, but. And I can see the lip here, which I kind of like. too picky, I don't know. That's the shadow of the daisy. Might actually be fun if it felt more like a daisy. You know, kind of the shape. need to tone more of these panels. I go through a lot of them. I order these from Dick Blick, I think I told you that, and they're gessoed, but mm, I have to put a couple more coats of gesso on them. They're just real slick. 
eight by ten is my favorite size, I guess. Obviously it is, is what I paint most of the time, so it must be. I try to stay with standard sizes to frame anyway. Eight by ten, eleven by fourteen, sixteen by twenty. See we don't really have a um a definite place here for the picture to be, but I think that's okay. I I think it works anyway. Some of these areas in here may be too light. One advantage of staying with a wash on there, uh, starting with a darker wash, I mean, you know, we had some color on the panel. We'll hit that, make that little. All right. It's kind of simple and uh, darker there, cleaning up the shape of the picture. Maybe getting too picky, you know, I want soft edges, so. Push and pull, right back and forth. I'm going to, um, I, Impressionism is a lot of soft edges, but sometimes you don't want everything to be soft. To find that little lip a little bit more, I kind of like that to stand out. And I feel like we need to do a little something here so the handle stands out a little more without getting too picky and hard edged. I picked up some blue, didn't we? Kind of give that a, a bit of a flower shape too. Things like that, I think, can be very interesting in a painting. An interesting shadow or um, some reflected color can just be wonderful. See, and it's a beautiful color too, which doesn't hurt. All right, let me look at these daisies again and see if we want to make any of them more sense out of some of them. Now this is not my lightest color, but I feel like maybe we need to explain this guy a little bit better. variation in the center of these guys. What's attractive is to put a little um, transparent red in there, get a little warmth in there too. I don't have burnt sienna on here. I used to always have that on my palette. And I do have a big two of it. I probably ought to tone with it. I took a workshop one time and I didn't have it on my, it's been a long time, a couple of years since I had it on my palette. That particular instructor did not like it and uh, I don't know, I just haven't put it back, but I have, like I said, I have a whole tube of it all to start using it. At least a tone with, huh? I love the transparent red oxide, which is 
similar, but again, transparent. It's probably my favorite color. All right. Do we look too? I want to bring some of them out so we don't look like a real tight little bundle here. That's kind of why I pulled that out that way. I'm going to um, mix up a very dark, dark ultramarine transparent red oxide, <coughs> excuse my voice, and I'm going to uh, ground this a little bit, put something really dark under there, maybe a little bit there. It's a messy job, this painting, isn't it? Some people are not messy at it. I'm messy at it. I paint with one gentleman that it's amazing how neat he is. He puts out his paints and um, after he's done, he, well, he, th he throws away what's left because he completely cleans up and wipes down his palette. And All right, what do we think? It'd be kind of nice to suggest a little shadow under there maybe. Let's see. What do we think of that? bit of that color up in that shadow too in both. One thing that is a little confusing, this is a flower petal off of the tip of that uh, pitcher. I don't know that I want that there. just a little darker back in here so you can really see where the picture is. Kind of lost that. Okay, what do we think? 
kind of like the suggestion of a little shadow here, I think. Sometimes the simplest things can be really nice. Darken in the edge a little bit. Alrighty. It's pretty good. Kind of simple and uh, I'm looking at the shape of things, you know, shape of the picture and stuff. I'm going to tip that in just a little bit. Let's call it. I'll get up and show it to you. <laughs> 47 minutes. That's pretty quick, isn't it? Mm, I see some things that aren't perfect. You know how it is when you, like, you know, I've got a, a stripe here that's when I wipe the canvas, it's kind of in between light and dark. But I kind of like the abstract quality of it that I wiped it back and take in a little bit. A lot of texture on those daisies. Everywhere there was light hitting. And little tiny guy at the bottom. We shattered him. Well, it was fun and quick. Um, always good practice. Um, again, like and subscribe. Check out my website. Find me on Facebook, Barbara Pask Fine Art. And join me again soon. Have a nice night. Bye-bye.